Hello my friends of Middle Earth and welcome to the Beyond Sanas channel. My name is Shanks and today we are going to cast a 1v1 replay for Battle for Middle Earth 1 on a patch 2.2 on the most known map ports of Aizen between Good and Evil El Clasico, Mordor and Rohan. Of course the Golem is going to be a very impactful hero in those kind of situations because he's quite cheap and also very mobile. He's not very tanky but he can be disturbing, annoying and buy you some additional time so you can get to recruit more orcs. Talking about orcs, Mordor is the faction that always requires the same opening. You wanna always, in every single matchup, start with an orc pit. Because the orcs, they are for free, but you don't wanna forget to recruit them. And here is a quick tip. When you press shift and recruit with R key, you can queue up five of them at the same time. So you never forget to recruit orcs. It's gonna be bad, you know? The tower is also bad. You don't want to build a tower because you don't need it. There is zero percent chance Rohan can destroy your orc pit. You can send workers to repair the structure, and with Die of Sauron, you can crash those peasants anyway. Okay, so more peasants are recruited from the farms outside, and he's filling up the base with additional farms. So he's not planning to re to rush the stable. And Mordor's eco is remaining untouched. I see you. And also about this matchup, when you play Mordor against Rohan, you can always pick up the Eye of Sauron because unlike Gondor, Rohan can't go for the, for the land to nullify your leadership bonuses, so your Eye of Sauron will always work. Okay, so the Hobbit is running for his life. Meriadoc Brainybog doesn't stand a chance. In this situation, I would like to creep with Mordor. And also what you want to do is you want to use your workers to scout because this is going to hurt, okay? Mordor has no information yet that this is about to come. And when they come, you have zero towers on this side of your castle. It means your slaughterhouse is doomed. You can't protect it. Oh, that's going to be bad because there's 315 you are losing. That's even worse than losing a lumber mill at this point of the game. Uh oh This way, my friend. And also, I'm not a big fan of going for the, you know, for the counter push this late into the game because your opponent will most likely have some Rohirrim very, very soon. So you won't be able to destroy this Lumber Mill or the farm rather anyway. So creeping, I think, is more valuable because this way you get to industry power spike a bit faster and your opponent will get to collect less power points. It's a win-win situation. I mean, they will deal good amount of damage, but I don't think they can finish this now. The Rohirrim are just way too fast. They are running, zooming. And we have Haradrim Palace. Okay, level 1. One more Haradrim required to get it to level 2. It will give Mordor a chance to recruit the soldiers of Rune. Easy defense on the farm, no problemo. Now they can creep this one too, no problem. And more Rohirrim required. So two Rohirrim, third Rohirrim. And you need in total four of them to get your stable to level two, which will give you the option to buy the horse shield upgrade. More resistances versus cavalry and arrows. Mordor in the meantime creeping this one slowly but surely. Radrims are a great uh, you know way to creep the war layer and also troll layer. And they will get level two after doing this. Orcs are grabbing the money. In Mordor is enough money to now buy the outpost, okay? And with the Haradrims inside the outpost, it will be almost impossible for Rohan to destroy this without having a strong army. Boom. Look at this. Choo-choo-choo. They will get level 2 of this one. Watch this. Level 2. Triple, triple furnaces. And, you know, Rohan sees this, of course, but he can't do anything about the situation. In the meantime, the Haradrim here is also trying to creep. Rohan was able to buy this outpost over here. And here's Theorin on the field. And Theodin's goal is to get to level 4. Now, in this situation, if you want to play the long game against Mordor as Rohan, I would always recommend to go for Elma instead of Theodin. Because in my book, the Elma leadership is just better than the Glorious Charge from Theodin because it's permanent. So as long as your Elma is around, your units will have 70% more DPS, which is incredibly valuable. The Glorious Charge is amazing against factions like Isengard who are building on the infantry army but against Mordor with trolls, Mumu kills and Nazgûs it doesn't add too much value and it only is active for 15 seconds so I would definitely prefer Ioma over Theorin but it's always good to have Glorious Charge you know it's not the worst thing in the world 
And also, this is an incredible important lead on against an Asgul. And I believe Mordor is planning to rush an Asgul because he has not a troll kitchen in, inside the castle yet. And he will eventually get more of these runes until he has enough money to get either an Asgul or even the Witch King. Almost level 4. Almost level 4. And here's Eowyn too. And Eoma. So he has all the Rohan heroes, you know, from the Rohan faction. The siblings of Rohan, the brother and sister, Eowyn, the shield maiden, and Eoma, of course, the horse lord. And now even the king after Theoden got eaten alive by the Felbys of the Witch King in the films. Stable level 1. Maybe we can get also Gimli. Would be amazing. Mordor is 3.5k. And Rohan is 2.4k. His archer range will hit level 2 very, very soon. It will give you the chance to buy the fire upgrade. That's great. And Theodine, really close level 4. Really, really close to unlock the glorious charge, okay? But because he's playing it so slow, and he's playing it so late game depending, um, Mordor is getting a lot of money. So he, Mordor is like 2, 3 outside mills, plus our outpost, that's completely fine for Mordor, okay? Mordor can do whatever he wants with this much money. And he has now 3.2k. Actually, he's, you know, changing his mind and going for the troll cage instead. Seeing Eowyn and Eoma, especially Eowyn, the smite is incredibly impactful against heroes like a Nazgul or Witch King. And it won't be that good against Eowyn. And he will even have now Eoma, uh, Legolas on the field. That is Legolas, so Legolas, Hulkstrike, Eoma's Spion and Eowyn's Spion is almost enough to 100 to 0 a Nazgul. So changing the idea or the plan to go for the trolls, I like it. I really do like it, okay? So two power points for Mordor. Industry available. Pick it and use it. Boom. It's gonna give you money. Trust me that one, okay? That's a free experience for Legolas. And he's gonna get stronger with each level he gets. This, this also, by the way, impacts always the damage output from your abilities. For example, your Hawk Strike will also deal more damage when you are higher leveled. And we have a Mountain Troll. More Mountain Trolls are required. Okay, so 3000 for Mordor. I mean, he will have the chance to definitely get more Trolls up on the field. He has two Trolls queued up. And maybe at the same time be able to save up for the Witch King. That should be the goal of you as Mordor. To get the maximum amount of leadership bonuses. So Witch King, of course, being more durable compared to an Asgul. And also he adds a lot of value with the leadership. And even the debuff to make your, to make the enemy units weaker. So basically you give 50-50 damage armor, but you also nullify and nerf or debuff your enemy units, the enemy units from your opponent, by reducing their armor by 15%. This long story short will mean that you actually give 65% more damage to your army, which is crazy. You know, it's the best leadership in the game, which gives you this much damage and this much armor in a large area, in a large radius too. So which king can stay here? They can give leadership to the units inside the circle. And he only needs to stay here in the middle. That's pretty, pretty strong. We have now also Elven Warriors. Legolas level 4 can use 3 Arches on cooldown. Every 90 seconds you can use this over and over again. Get free experience. And remember and keep in mind that also Theoden can do this later on. With the King's Weaver once he's level 5, okay? So 4 Trolls. They have also 3s in their hands. He has actually 5 Trolls in, in total upon the field. And... Uh, Six troll will be a drama troll. Oh, the runes are feeding though. Level 2 elves, it's good. And level 5 Legolas, it's even better. Because the leadership will make the elves deal more damage too. So remember, you get 30% from Theorin and 20% from Legolas. Oh, the trolls though, they are coming in clutch. Boom, boom, chakalaka, boom, boom, chakalaka. Sit down. Do one does not simply walk into Mordor. Did Boromir not warn you, you stupid elves? <laughs> okay, three Rohan heroes and also Legolas was able to survive. That's good, actually. Uh, Legolas, uh, Theoden level four, Eoma level one, so is Eowyn. Armory is upon the field for Rohan. He will get potentially all the upgrades from the armory, no problemo. And he has an archer range. So it looks like he doesn't want to go for the Rohirrim archers. I think Rohirrim archers are actually better against Mordor because you have the hit and run potential. 
Even though elves are also quite mobile, but trolls can catch up to the elves while they can't catch up to the Rohirrim archers. And that's the reason why you should go for Elma first. So with Elma, remember, Theodin gives you leadership with level 1, okay? You don't need to invest any time into your Theodin. Of course, having Glorious Charge is great, but it's not a requirement. It's not necessary. But what's definitely important and necessary is the Horse Lord leadership from Elma. So you get 70% from this dude and 30% from Theodin. That will mean 100% more DPS, okay? For your Rohirrim Arches. And you can also get later on Aragorn for 150% more damage output on your Rohirrim Arches. And they are crazy fast. They are act as fast as horses are. And you, my friend, have the chance to hit. And whenever he is trying to engage on you, you can disengage. Because they can never catch up to you. Okay, he's going for the outpost now. Mordor has 2.5k. He's actually making combos. Okay. He has 2.5 combos around this location. But fighting around this location is a, is a very risky move too. Because there's a statue well... If leadership from this dude, of course, statue gives also more damage outputs and also armor, so it's difficult. And also the combos give Rohan the chance to use Glorious Charge and run you down. Smart move from Mortar though. He's okay, you know what? I get it, you have the outposts over here, but I will ignore your outposts and go for your straight go straight up for your castle. And if this army gets in the castle of Rohan. He can crush the entire castle in a second. What is Rohan doing? Use the Glorious Charge at least. No way. What is he doing? Run, you fools. Actually, he's so lucky. Yeah, he's so lucky that Mordor didn't even try to kill the heroes. And also, Elma get level 3 out of that. That's pretty big, actually, because that will unlock the outlaw leadership, which means money, money, money. Whenever they kill units, okay? Golem has been taken down for 21. Now the money is rising. Eye of Sauron is going to be used. And Rohan is disengaging. But Mordor doesn't need to stop here. Mordor can actually just straight up go for the castle. And that's the plan of the trolls. There are five trolls. And trust me now, one. They can destroy your wall in two and a half seconds, okay? The combos are big time hurt. But every single Rohirrim has been taken down. The glorious charge potential have been wasted. This, what the Rohan player was trying to build up to, has not been successfully, you know, used, okay? Mordor has great map control. There is only one outpost, few farms, and the broken castle. Trolls, they like those choke points. They like those choke points. And elves, they need to respect us. Now they can ignore everything and go for the structures. Structure, structure, structure. Destroy every single structure. The Legolas! Oh, there comes the heal. You don't want to be like this choke or disengage a bit. In the meantime, the drama troll has to be with the combos. Remember, they have no witch king leadership, nor do they have darkness, okay? Trolls are knocking down each other, and it looks like the Rohan player will be able to defend himself with the maxed out leadership on the Elvin warriors, okay? And remember, Elma was giving a lot of value to with the outlaw leadership. Now that the trolls and drama troll are gone, the orc archers, they have zero leadership. They can, ne they can never ever fight against the army of elves with this much leadership. Eoma could get eventually level 4 here, but he's not placing him next to the elves. Eowyn is back in the business, has now the disguise ability if she wants to. Great amount of damage dealt, and we hear the witch king coming now from the fortress of Mordor, okay? There are few orcs and easterlings, but what he, what he can do? They can do nothing about the situation. There are too many elves upon the field. But full map control from Mordor. Mordor now has the chance to build up the second tro uh, troll cage. I wouldn't go for the combos, actually. I think it's a big mistake. Just fill up your command points with trolls and drama trolls. With Darkness, Witch King, Eye of Sauron. They will be immortals. Or go for the Mumma Kill Pen. Mumma Kills are so good. Because then the, your opponent can't just stand and shoot. They, he needs to keep moving permanently. So I think our army mix of trolls and Mumma kills can be quite, imp you know, cra crazily strong. That's what I'm trying to say. Elves are getting more experience. Level 3 will give them immunity to fear. So the screech from the Witch King won't affect them. But this is the ability we are, you know, talking about. That means less armor. You can see the Witch King is hitting like an absolute track. And each elf he will be able to take down will cost the Rohan player over eight nine hundred resources because you need to invest 400 only for the fire arrows okay all right huge elven army but the problem is you still need horses if you want mordor 
to not be Bill Gates, okay? Otherwise, Mordor is gonna be so rich that he will be getting two more Nazgûls upon the field. He will have like crazy strong and I am no man. That's gonna chunk. Ooh, that's a big chunk actually because she's level two. But Witch King, of course, is gonna get in safe to no problemo. And he'll up to full HP very, very soon. Again, multiple trolls. Look, that's the mistake I'm talking about. If you find yourself in a situation like this in which you are cash floating a lot while you are able to recruit trolls additionally, maybe it's time to build the second troll keys. Maybe it's time to build another production building. Because I believe it's going to add you more value, maybe go for it for the catapults, than going for a Nazgul. Because Nazgul in this situation can't really engage on the army of your opponent because your opponent has just like archers with leadership like crazy. And you don't need the Nazgul for the leadership anyway, for the map control anyway, because your opponent doesn't even try to compete with the map control. Remember, late game with level 3 farms, you get actually lots of money. You get 25 from each of these farms. And he has two more outside. You know, he has two outposts. Uh, one outpost and one castle. So Rohan has also outlaw leadership from Eoma, which basically is like a pillage. And with that being said, it's pretty decent. It's now also Eoma leadership. Level 5, Rohan, Hero, King's Fever is available. Should be using it every single time. Because look, this elves could be level 5 by now. Use it with this dude and with this dude. It gives you so much more DPS. Because each level will make your unit significantly stronger. I'm not talking about only like 2, ter two to 3 person. It's like 10 person plus. So level 10 units are like pre pretty much like a hero. Like a level elf, level 10 elven warrior is basically like a level 10 Legolas. That's how strong they can be, you know? Fighting here is... Oh boy, that's a big... Oh, no, 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 no! That's gonna be a disaster. Now he lost the most important dudes. Leadership is gone. If, if Witch King would be around, it would still be a big mistake to commit in this situation. Because think about this situation for... Hold on a second. Trolls are actually still doing a great job. With Witch King, they would be so much better killed. The focus from Rohan is actually horrible, I think, right? He's not focusing them one by one. And sometimes the trolls are dancing when they're getting killed. And still a tremendous amount of damage dealt. And Theon has been killed even. And this all without Witch King being around. Imagine Witch King being here. It would be even a big, bigger disaster. Luckily for Mordor, he can revive the Witch King for free. But it's gonna take you 4 minutes and 15 seconds in total to get the ruler of Engma back, okay? And again, fighting here, a big mistake. Why? Okay, let's think about the reason why, okay? This structure gives you 50% more damage, okay? So you get 50% from this structure, 30% from this dude, that's 80. And also 20% more from Legolas, for the elves exclusively, that's 100%. Then you have also, on your horses, 70% more from this dude. It's like 170% on your horses. It's like too much leadership. Not even talking about the armor leadership you get. You get 30% from this, 50% from um, Theorin. It's pretty big, you know. Two Nazgûls upon the field. Eowyn will use the smite, but of course they are full HP. Maybe... Oh, this gonna this gonna die, right? Let me think. Look. this gonna die. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's level 3. You see too much fire damage. Too much firepower around the outpost with the units inside the outpost too. They can also shoot, deal permanent damage. This dude is going to be back very, very soon. It's a 2 minutes revive time because he was level 5. Each level you take, there are like thresholds, will, you know, make the revive time a bit longer. It's like a bigger punishment if you lose your heroes. Troll cage level 3, that's going to be a production speed of 13 seconds. It's like a massive production speed for the trolls of the Mordor faction. And here's the money to do this. Yes, finally going for the Mooma kill pen. That's what I like to see. And Mooma kills. I would go for the second troll kitchen inside the castle if you don't want to go for catapults. Catapults would be the best valuable units in the situation. Your army, the enemy of your... The enemy army, I mean, will be very vulnerable against catapult damage. Archers have like crazy range of the elven faction, of the Rohan faction, I mean, with the elves. But your catapults will be able to outrange them. And archers, generally speaking, are like glass cannons. They are able to deal massive damage from a long distance. But they can't handle damage from you. So your catapults, two hits will kill the elves. And you can spam catapults. You can make like 10 catapults with this much money you have. With industry, good map control. And your furnaces are going to also lower the cost of your catapults too, by the way. Okay. Big army, mixed army. I like this army though. I like this army, but he has only Rohirrim arches. Zero normal Rohirrim. 
Only fire. Only fire. That's all he has. Theoden is going M. You want to keep your heroes a bit closer to your army. You to make sure that they give leadership. Theoden is gonna get chunked. The second glory charge is over. You need to be extremely careful. And also, Glorious Charge was kind of questionable to be used. You want to use it when the fight breaks out, okay? But the fight wasn't breaking out. Mordor was not even trying to contest. There comes the EOD summon from Rohan. That's how much power points he has. This is crazy. This is crazy, man. Really, I didn't expect this. Because Mordor is so far away from getting to the EOD, no? Uh, to the Balrog, no? How does... How did Cecil get... Collect this many power points? It's crazy. Will Witch King make it out though? Because he's gonna try to destroy the Baradur really soon. I think the Witch King is gonna get out in the. Yeah. He's gonna get out, but what can he do? Just fly away, I guess. The, out, the castle might still be protected because remember, there is no melee damage on this army from the elves. Okay, without melee damage. Oh, he has Ants though. And Ants will do a great amount of damage to Mordor, but also they will feed a lot of power points to Mordor. There comes the smite on the Witch King. Witch King is being chunked. Be careful. Every single structure is shooting on this army. And pretty much the one game, he is giving Mordor a chance to find a comeback. Okay, 12 power points. Remember, Mordor, like a minute ago, like when the, when the AOD was summoned from Rohan, Mordor had 8 power points. So he collected 4 power points in a one game. That's the reason why you want to have also melee damage. Your archers... You will need a lot of time to destroy those level 3 structures. They are very tanky. There is even a Lamry Mill from your opponent. The Nazgûls will get revived very soon. We get to finally see some movement kills in the action. They have like a crazy recruit time, a long recruit time with level 1. But the second this structure will get level 3, it will give you the chance to recruit every movement kill coming out of it being level 2. Again, level 2 will give the monsters the chance of self recovery. So when you can save them with like 1 HP left, and you get to send them back, they will heal up a lot. The Hobbit has been taken down. Screech, of course, level 3 unaffected, but level 2 are affected. Eowyn is coming to scream, I am no man. And knowing this, seeing this girl riding like a madman on you, mad girl on you, you want to disengage. Pew! Close. Long is Pietro. And of course, losing the Trollkish level 3 is a big, you know, big punishment for Mordor. Now, you need to wait for, like, we have, like, 50% increased production speed. The moment kill is Mordor paying attention to this one. Oh, but the damage is crazy. Too much damage, man. Too much damage, dude. Maybe here? And also, oh, oh, charge, 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 charge. This was your chance, but he didn't pay attention. He paid attention now. He paid attention now. The Mooma kill is going crazy. Level 4 Mooma kill. Level 5 Mooma kill. There is another one. And he killed Theoden and Eoma. You see, the Mooma kill is crazy, man. It's a must-have unit in those situations. Now you might say, but Mooma kill is so big against fire arrows too. Yes, you are right. But it requires so much dedication and concentration of your opponent. If he makes one mistake, one trample is all it takes to kill all his heroes from 100 to 0. Mooma kill basically one shots every single one of them. And now the Nazgûls can eventually clean up. This guy could use the Arrowwind, but it's on cooldown. The Nazgûls should be killing the army first, not Legolas. But he was able to buy enough time for the Mooma kill to come out. We have like lots of Mooma kills. Almost level 3 Mooma kill pan. Mooma kill is charging, 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 charging. But now he's gonna be slow. Of course, imagine him charging always at this speed. He would be the most bro he would be more broken than Balrog, to be honest with you guys, okay? 17 power points. So Mordor is getting closer to the ancient demon summon. And you know which demon we are talking about. Remember, EOD has been used like a couple of minutes ago. Now the ultimate summons have like a crazy long cooldown. Nine minutes we are talking about for EOD and Padrock. So, but it was more than five minutes ago, the EOD. So it's going to be available in about three minutes and 30 seconds from now. If also Aragorn upon the field, Aragorn, of course, can one-shot everything what Mordor has to offer. That comes to Atelas to heal up to full HP. Not even need to use the Blade Master nor the Elendil. 8 power points, you need to go for the Cloud Break. Cloud Break can be so good against movement kills. It will slow them down. They are already very slow. You're slowing them additionally by 30% and lowering their armor. Now he's going crazy. Wow. wow. 
Okay, never mind. <laughs> He's gonna burn out, okay? He has a burnout. <laughs> Alright, you need to get your heroes back. These two heroes, especially Theorin, is so important. Alright, they have a lot of elves. Eowyn, level 4. Level 5 will give you the chance to unlock the shield's maiden. Make her quite tanky. I mean, she is basically way stronger than Theorin and Eoma in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Oof, 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 oof. You see? No. Mumma kills, boys. The solution to all your problems. Level 4 Mumma kill. You love to see it. You love to see it. Did he actually kill a hero? Yeah, he killed Degolas. There comes the demon. Boom, son. Mumma kill in the meantime. You love to see the screen. Mumma kill is charging. There is nothing more to kill. He's gonna fly inside the jeans. And he's burning everything you see the map control importance for rohan in the lead game you can't keep with the economy of mordor in long run you can't mordor has even the chance to go for a scavenger very soon it's gonna even more give, give me more money he can go for the devastation too so basically you have industry you have devastation you have scavenger you have lumber mills you have free units you can revive your heroes for free this is so much more um Eco economy advantage over every other faction in the game that's the strength of Mordor, okay? It has a very unique playstyle because it's the only faction that is not able to buy upgrades. It has no heavy armor, it has no forge blades, but it doesn't need it. And the only structure remaining is going to be the, the stable level 3. There is a level 5, but there are two Mumma kills coming at you. There are two Mumma kills coming at you. One hit each. Boom. Holy. <laughs> Mumma kill gasm. Mumma kill gasm. You love to see the Mumma kills, man. Oh, in the meantime, he's going ham on the enemy castle, though. Okay. Does he have Cloud Break? He has Cloud Break. Should be using it now. Why not use it? Just use it. Oh, what a hit. What a hit. You know why what happened there and i want you to understand why this happened so if first of all rohan should be waiting a little bit longer for the aod to be available before he commits to this fight okay first of all that's the first thing and second thing is he's missing a lot of leadership on the elves aragorn was around this location so when aragorn is here theoden being dead legolas being dead basically means elves have zero and i mean legit zero damage leadership and there is a Witch King, Eye of Sauron, Drummer Troll for the Trolls. Trolls won't get killed that quickly from the Elves if the Elves lack damage leadership. The only damage leadership you had was Aragorn, but he was not anywhere close to the Elves. Aragorn being extremely strong, of course, the one-man army he is. But in the meantime, Mordor saying, you know what? I will let you take a couple of my structures, but in the meantime, I will just take over your own castle. And... Even if you destroy somehow my castle, which I won't let happen, of course, but as, let's assume you will be able to do it, then trust me on that one, you have no money, not even close, to get it. You have now no more heal, no Atelas, what is your Aragon gonna do? Aragon is gonna lie on the ground, cry a little bit, and go to the graveyard. What is your Eowyn gonna do? She's gonna use the shield maiden, actually. The one lone <laughs> Elven archer with level 2. What a game, dude. I can't... Look, I, I can't believe that Rohan lost this game. I'm being honest. Like, imagine using EOD while your opponent is like 10 power points away from his Balrog. And you... I don't know, man. You never used Cloud Break in the first place. The Mumma kills... Guys, you let me know in the comment section down below. For me personally, the Mumma kills were the win condition of Mordor. Like, killing the Alvin heroes, killing the Rohan heroes over and over again weakening the eco from rohan a lot like if it would not be for the drama uh, for the mumma kills there would be no chance for mordor to, oh <laughs> there would be no chance for mordor to kill the heroes over and over again and of course the other will lose condition for rohan is the lack of map control i'm pretty certain that mordor eventually collected more than double the amount of money from rohan rohan is generally speaking always the weakest faction in terms of economy that's their main weakness because they have only 7 spots inside the castle, while Mordor, Isengard have 8, and Gondor is even 9. That's the reason why you heavily rely on the map control. But of course, you have also cheaper units, cheaper heroes. Eowyn level 8, 
the only hero remaining. Every other hero is in the graveyard. One farm to rule them all. <laughs> One farm level 3. Full map control for Mordor. All he needs to do is to destroy the last remaining farm in the last remaining outpost. He can't even recruit more units. He can't. No money. He's upgrading those units, not even all of them. Most of them have not even heavy armor yet. If Eoma would be here, it would be still better. Because Eoma gives you outlaw leadership, which means you get money for killing orcs, Easterlings, Nazgûl, Witch King. And Eoma will... Eoma is a hero that is has like a crazy, you know, return on investment. So basically you invest money into Eoma, but when he's level 3, he will give you the money back you invested into him multiple times. So it's like uh, buying a house for 100k and selling it in two years for 500k. That's how crazy, you know, impactful Elma actually is. For me personally, with Lourdes, Lourdes, then Elma. In terms of cost efficiency. Because Lourdes also has the pillage. But Lourdes also adds, of course, way more value. Because he's a very strong hero, leadership, bow, sword, cripple, pillage, everything. Elma, or actually... Mary is level 9, that's great to see. He's also the Mary Dog Esquire of Wuhan for more armor. But of course, even with 30% armor, what can a Hobbit do? He can saturate the seat. He's holding though, he's holding it. But it's gonna be over the second the Balrog is available. Mordor knowing, okay, you know what? Whatever happens, he has 0% chance to win this. 0% chance. So if, the, if he destroys level 3, level 3 farm, you would have even less chance than zero, like minus 10% chance. Oh, okay. The Wumba kills are coming. Char, 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 charge. Only the Ains are going to war. The last march of the Ains begins. I am no man. Level almost 10 Eowyn, that's something we don't see very often. What is this fiesta what I'm watching right now? Dude, Ains, Archers, Eowyn level almost 10, Mariodoc, Brandybog level almost 10, Eowyn officially hit level 10. This is something we don't see very often actually. I think the last time I saw a level 10 was when I was playing the campaign and I was intentionally putting in the time and the effort to get her, get her to level 10. But in a 1v1 game, I think I've, ne I've never gotten her to level 10. Or when it was, it was like a long time ago. Okay, the, the cheat code activated. You have been a great warrior. You have been a great opponent. But it's time to end this once and for all. Swords are no more useful here. Trees are no more useful here. I will even kill my own Muma kill. And I will smite you. Make you learn new dance moves in the sky. Ants are scared. Their time is gone. The only structure remaining that keeps the Rohan play alive is the statue, the heroic statue. Is it heroic enough? He's trying to rebuild it. He's trying to fight until the very end. But one breath fire will end this game. GG well played right because enjoyed this game. If you did, you know what to do. Smash that like button. I will see you hopefully in the next video. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.